say that we marching every day and the cops still doing the same thing. Okay, perfect question for this exact time. So we're at this march right now and I just have to make it very pivotal that whether it's just one brother and sister or a thousand of you, you march on. You fight for what you believe in because at the end of the day, they'll choke one of you. They'll take one of your life. So while you're still above the ground before they put you under it, it's vital that you fight for your life. I don't care if you're at home, if you're at work, if you're on the bus, if you're on the train. If nobody show up or everybody show up, you march on because that's what we do. Haitian is the first revolutionized black nation in all of the world, the first black republic, and you should do your history. And you know why that became? Because we marched on. We didn't stop the fight, and we kept fighting, and we will do so today and any other day. Anytime you see we're coming out, you come out because it's up to each and every one of us to be the leader because they will make each and every one of us the dead body that cannot matter or talk anymore. So while you still have your voice, you better use it. While you still have your feet, you better use it and march. So how do you think that we as a people should trample racism? So the best way, um, well there's multiple ways and multiple ways the, um, signifying that you have to calculate your own best way because not every way is going to work for everybody. But what we've been doing, how we've been literally trampling it is with our feet, marching and stomping the ground and making noise with our voices and our feet and marching in the streets. But there's so many ways you could combat it. But the most pivotal point is a lot of people want to mention to vote for people. Well, how can you vote for anybody who won't represent you? We have countless people, black people in office, and we're still dealing with the same issues. So the point is don't wait to have to vote for somebody to make the change. You have to be the change yourself. You don't need a law degree to be able to signal what needs to happen for your basic human rights that God gave you. So at the end of the day, it's up to you to signify what is the best way to make that change and to actually do it. The most biggest thing you do is action. Marching and protesting is great. It shows the power. It gathers up the unity and everything in that aspect. But at the same time, we got to stop investing in businesses that don't invest in us. We got to stop investing in businesses that won't even invest in your funeral at the hands of police brutality or even each other's brutality. Because don't say black on black crime, because every community has crime by the same person that look at them. At the point you got to look at is the system and the environment that creates that crime to be harbored and to now rise up. We should be creating rehabilitation, not criminalization. We should be creating steps before you even get to the crime to where you wouldn't even need to commit it. You have to ask yourself, why do people rob? Why do people steal? You're hungry, you're gonna steal some food. You're starving, you're gonna steal some food. If the media has promoted to you Balenciaga, Gucci, Louis Vuitton, all these brand names, you're gonna think you need it. That's what marketing is. You go to school, business, it teaches you that. It teaches you to work on the affects of people's sociological membrane and the way they think, their psychology. And that's what the powers that ha have been, white power, white privilege has been using since our existence and it's time to use it back, educate ourselves, have knowledge and invest in ourselves, our own businesses, our own economy, our own money, why do you need a police when you could create your own police? Policing is to enforce the law. When you have committed a crime, that's when the police comes in. So you therefore do not need the police. What you need is methods to where you wouldn't have situations where you need a crime. If somebody could call domestic violence for at 311 over 10 times and until they get murdered, that's when the NYPD comes, that should tell you something. We need to intervene, we need to act, we need to look out for each other. And that's how you're supposed to live. Plants don't attack each other because they grow in harmony. We need to do the same, grow in harmony. And because of these marching, there's a lot of statues like Christopher Columbus. Yeah. Other statues, they start tearing down. Yeah. Do you think, is the marches put effect on these statues to be removed? Of course, it's the, because what makes the marches are the people. So whether you're marching collectively or you march on your own to the office, writing a letter, composing an email, they know what needs to be done. So sometimes it's not even the action that we're doing now because they've been knew it even before you did the action yourself because they created the action to make you have the reaction. So they already knew what was wrong with the system. It's just now they're actually implementing what should have been done before it was even put into existence. No statues such as those should have been up in the first place. Where are our statues? Where are things that signifies us in true freedom? And you have to remember, statues are dead, they're non-existent, they're inanimate objects, they're sculptures. But you have to remember, those same statues are living people who have done the same thing statues have done, and when they die, will they erect them too, in bronze and silver? Look at the people around you, what are they doing, how are they acting? 
make them into a statue to where they no longer matter while they're still alive to try to influence you in your life to take it away from you. So what message would you send to the people who don't believe in the things you are doing for them now, marching and fighting just because they lack of their knowledge, they lack of their history, and they're just home and they were just trying to say what you are doing, you can't be successful. Right, right. What message would you send to them because they don't know what they're saying? Right, right. Well, what God ordains, what God puts in place, no man, no demon, no spirit can ever take under. And those aren't the exact wording, those are my own words, but you know exactly what I'm talking about. And the point is, it's not for them, it's for us. It's for the people who are out here. And one thing I always knew to keep in mind, as long as I'm not doing anything destructive for you, even if you run and look at the rioting and the looting, there's way more of the marching, the protesting, and the fighting. And the reason why they're rioting and looting, if that's their pain and anger being reflected, just as they have been rioted and looted their whole life. And I don't need to tell you that to know that, but you just want to ignorantly look at it in the way they have looked at it. Because you want to stay as a slave in chains. Any religion, any God that cannot permit you to have freedom that he bore you in from your mother's womb isn't a God. And the God I serve, he made me equal like everybody. He made me able to fight for myself just like he would fight for me. Because he gave me feet to be able to walk. He gave me eyes to be able to see and he gave me a mouth to be able to talk for a reason. So at the end of the day, it's going to benefit you whether you like it or not. And while we live in harmony, eventually you will too. But it's because the system is why you think like that. So why can't I be mad at you? Instead, what I should do is work to fight against that system to where nobody else will have to think like that again, including yourself. And it will happen. And I just wish peace for you, your mind, and your family. And that's what we're out here to do. I think that we as African people, because we see Marcus Garvey, Malcolm X, all these black freedom fighters fought for us to be free. And a day like today, mm. we're still in the mm. same situation. Right. Do you think that us as African people living in America, we will get our freedom in America? We will get it because we will take it. You know, the reason why a lot of times it didn't work in the past is because you're waiting on people to give it to you. You don't need to wait for another economy to create your own economy, or economy we actually already have. It's just we invested in the wrong economy. We invested in the wrong businesses, and we invested in the wrong people instead of investing in ourselves. So at the end of the day, at this point, there's no more questions of that nature because you want it, you better go get it. You better take it, you better create it. Matter is neither created nor destroyed, it's there. You just gotta simply identify and discover it as so many of our leaders have done so, which we know they never did. So you as a young sister, as a young queen, as a young goddess, I salute to you. What message would you would send to the sister just like you to uplift them, spirit uplift their soul? Okay, well. Just because there's a lot of sister lost. Yes, and there's a lot of brothers lost. There's a lot of Thank people you. lost. Thank Many you. races are lost. But you know why we're lost is because we don't unify. We think we're differentiated or we're so different. But at the end of the day, we're all humans. And we're all subject to the susceptibility of being victim to a system, adversity, and all the negative things. But we also, in that same affect, can grow back and rear back to positivity. You see, there's two routes you could take in life. One may be the one that you planned for yourself. The other one may be the one God planned for you. But you're still able to choose and identify which one you want to tread on. But at the end of the day, you'll still end up at the point you're meant to be. So all there is to say to that at the end of the day, even me, I found out about the day and historical you know events and all of that nature to where it's knowledge and it's factual and everything head on head on hold down just after doing one day one minute one hour of research and I just retained the information the Haitian flag we got our revolution on January 1st 1804 the Haitian flag was sewn in 1803 and I just you know learned that out of one day even though I've been Haitian my whole life I learned that for myself so at this point Look on the internet, talk to your brothers, come out here, talk to your sisters, open your mind. And even if you don't, we will open it for you because we're out here. Just listen and be a part of it. Do your part and you will get there. And don't be discouraged if you don't because we're here for you and we're here to help you learn. So at this point, everybody's for everyone. I am your neighbor next door that you can knock on and ask for sugar. Time to do it. Ask for the sweetness that we all have inside of us. Of us. Thank you. Some Haiti history. Yes, sir. See, you are from Haiti. Yes, sir. I am Haitian. Like I said, I'm out here. I'm Haitian every day. I'm, I'm out here, but I'm black. I'm Haitian. I'm a woman. At the end of the day, I'm a human, right? And I, I am definitely Haitian, even in my blood and my veins. So I'm here. I'm here every day. 
since my upbringing, since my birth, and since my death. I'm Haitian. And we're here. We're here. We're here. We're here. Thank you.